Uh, yeah, Dan Burton, and I've been doing this about 50 years. Uh, but I developed my interest in bicycling when I was a young kid and just wanted to help get other people to ride bikes. Uh, I've now worked in about 3,600 communities and uh, Austin a couple of times now. Mateo wanted to talk about Simon Avenue, but I also want to mention that it's so rewarding to see the bike racks full during the school day now. Thank you so much, Bobby. There's, There's bike racks there. on the side that are also full. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So Simon does uh, the east-west uh, central uh, corridor for Miller. It's a one-way couplet. We have three one-way couplets. Uh, in Miller, and this has got the widest median. The two side streets on either side are about 19 foot, I believe, curb to curb, with parking on one side. Um, that wouldn't be allowed today in Austin. City of Austin requires 25 foot uh, minimum clear. And so you would need the parking plus 25 foot under today's regulations without an exception. The other thing that they had to do is it's in basically three sections. It connects the school, sorry, all the way down to the town center. So this is a major uh, route for, for, for kids who are coming here and also going to the town center. And so it's, you know, it's a wonderful, uh, I think pretty well designed street. They had to pull the trees back on these later blocks to accommodate the possibility of the uh, trucks needing uh, to be able to pull up on the curb or deploy outrickers or that kind of thing. That was a fair accommodation, I think, but they really wanted us to get rid of the parking or basically widen that street to 25 foot clear, which would have really destroyed right. the street. I, I love this street. I feel like it's probably one of the most safest streets, especially going to that town center and being able to get lunch and then come back to school. You can still do it fairly quickly and you don't have much traffic. I love this street. No, it's very good. And uh, yeah, the National Fire Code is just off the charts ridiculous. More people being seriously injured or killed because uh, we're trying to shave a few seconds off of the response time. But we can do it just with good design, right? Yeah. 25 feet, wow. <laughs> yeah, Austin has an exception to the IFC. Uh, well, that's good. No, 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 it's, it, we're, we're 25 foot minimum as opposed to 20 foot in the IFC. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's frustrating. Uh, yeah, you're going the wrong direction. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, the good thing is that there are ways to um, get exceptions done if you have certain kinds of design like a lot of intersections right. and short right. blocks and things like that so well I love the median noses and uh, I think your openings are uh, excessive the 14 feet will receive any type of a vehicle uh, especially if the street you're leaving gives you reasonable width and in this case they do uh -huh. right so so the it's next a step down in the right direction. Even, uh, even closer in. Oh yeah. Foot is enough on a one Four, way. Yeah. Fourteen feet is the magic number for for, for one way. Uh -huh. Yeah. On a Fourteen feet. foot for the entry. And we actually have a lot of people that will park in the lane on the street and wait for their children to to get out and to come back in, which you know is safer. At least they're parking over there and kids are crossing, well, and we yeah. have the crossing guards. Right. So you do have crossing guards. Yes, yeah. we do. Okay. I love the two-way bike uh, lane. Uh, does that get used pretty well? Yes, yes. yes. And nice. then even when I come up to park my bike, people will yell at me sometimes, this is a sidewalk, you have your lanes. And I'm like, I'm parking, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yes, it does. It actually, um, there's, there's still a little bit of construction 
on both ends actually and so that we even have walker joggers using the bike lanes as well but so far all of the traffic within the bike lanes has been very very friendly nice any idea what uh, number of children walk and bike to school daily um i it's hard to tell the walkers because like i said a lot of people will drop them off here and then they walk in um but we've had at least 20 bicycles semi-regularly and i'm hoping that that will grow this year as we help parents to feel more comfortable in order to do so, I plan on doing monthly community rides with our kiddos and our families from not only this school, but from our feeder elementary school so that they will grow into that comfort as their children nice. approach the middle school age. So Bobby, with the, the 20 riders or the bicycles you're talking about, what's your school population? The school population right now is just over 400. It's gonna <laughs> grow every year though, yes, right? Yes. Yeah, they're and phasing year, in one grade at a time. Right. So next year we will have all three grade levels. Right now we just have the two. Last year we had the one and it was probably about 10 bicycles, 12 which bicycles. Was, which was what grade? Last year was sixth grade. So the sixth graders have graduated up to seventh grade. Now we have new sixth graders. We've got a few parents who are pretty good about riding in with their kids. Okay. And so this year we're piloting a program where we are trying to have everybody sign up on an app so that they can connect electronically and say, yes, we're gonna go on this bike train or this, this, um, this, this walking train and stuff. So that's where the incentives are coming in. I'm really hoping to get more families signed up and connected online. Well, this is marvelous. Um, and um, when was the school built? Uh, it, we opened last year, last oh, school year. Oh, okay, so, so this you're, is our you're second totally year. correct okay. about increasing. Yes. Yeah. This, this may be the first protected bikeway intersection in the state of Texas. Huh, really? So we have a, that street has one of these, this street has one of these, they come together down at this next corner. Oh, look at all the cyclists, yay! Hey, guys. hey that's all one family. Don't talk to me about all the cyclists. <laughs> <laughs> How y'all doing? Well, this has done so well, and you say the Pickup drop off is down here. They come in down there, drop in there, and come out there, or go back out. Okay. So they never go to the front of the school. And this is nearing completion. This is actually a city park right here, Dan. Okay. And they're just finishing it up, but it wraps around the school, which is so cool because the school doesn't have to maintain it. The city park can, and so the school can do other things with their money. Oh, I love that. How nice. <clears throat> I'm gonna pause to get a photo. Yep. Once they get the sidewalk open and everything, we'll probably get the dogs and the people out of the bikeway. <laughs> Every street in Miller is named after some historic figure in Austin. Oh, really? Yeah, so this is Zach Scott. And uh, he was an actor, no, an okay. actor here. Uh, and each, each street, there's a story behind each street. Wow. We will go, we may go by Taniguchi Park. Taniguchi is the one who developed our uh, botanical garden here. And so we built a park and named it after him. Oh, that is nice. It looks like the sidewalks are easily eight, probably 10 feet. Uh, most of them are. There's some streets that you'll see they're narrower. This is part of a trail that goes all the way around the entire community. It's over, it's like six, six 6.2 miles long or something. Oh, I love it. And it goes all the way around. This is the middle school up to here. This is a different organization. This is a uh, safe route, a safe place for kids and moms who've been abused. Uh, we've got Boys and Girls Club down here and we've got the Salvation Army wow. down through here. Uh, this is our skate park and one of our big uh, parks back in the back. So we just wanted to stop here briefly just to uh, check out the, the trail uh, connection here. So you see the, the trail where this uh, lady is walking right here is going to be continued right here and right yeah. there. Uh, and so, you know, there needs to be some kind of treatment. Uh, we uh, had discussed raised crosswalks, uh, something like that. Um, and uh, it was just a little point, uh, just to 
just to stop and check that out and uh, then we'll roll on over to the skate park and and uh, and talk briefly about that as well let's do it yeah. I want to talk a little bit about the, the, the name of this park, too. It's a really interesting kind of story uh, that um, uh, the, it started showing up on the map um, as a skate park. And, uh, and there was some, somebody out there in Internet land thought, let's, let's give it a funny name. <laughs> And so they named it uh, Gaylord Sackler Skate Park. It was not an official naming at all by the city. Uh, it was just online from some random people on the internet gave it that name. And now we're stuck with it. Uh, I had proposed that we name it after Michael F. Adams, who was one of the pioneers in the neighborhood and got everybody riding um, on training loops around the neighborhood and staffed the first bike to work breakfast station here in Mueller. I thought it'd be a great honor to him because if he, he were still alive, he died of cancer uh, about 10 years ago. Um, and if, if he'd have known about this, man, he would have been so proud to, you know, um, to have this in, in our community. And, uh, I thought it would be fitting for them to name it. I, I never got a response at all. So now we're stuck with Gaylord Sackler. So that's my story about the skate park. And I just wanted to stop here briefly. It's a great, it's a little bit uh, hard for uh, very beginning riders, uh, but I see kids out there two, three years old uh, that, uh, you know, are just ripping it uh, on, on the track. and. Uh, it's just, it's a great destination uh, too. Whenever we do group rides, you know, we got to see the skate park and, and uh, it's a, a really great addition to the neighborhood. So Dan, for your benefit, um, this, this is the Southeast Greenway and it hugs the whole edge of the neighborhood and turns into the Southwest Greenway and goes around to the airport boulevard side. And my understanding is a lot of that is about the drainage because the neighborhood was all planned um, we were able to do small lots and, and coordinate the drainage, and so there's some big retention ponds that now look like beautiful lakes that have yeah. all kinds of heron and ducks and things. Um, but it's, it continues around the entire um, property. There's a four-mile loop, a lot of it crushed granite, and we'll ride the some of it. The Greenway does. The Greenway does, nice. yeah. So we'll, we'll ride some of it, but we wanted to cut back into the neighborhood for a minute before we do that. Love it. So. Let's do it. So, Dan, it was nice of you to pop in here real oh, quick. It's a treat for me. Yeah. Uh, I've followed this neighborhood from its inception, but yeah. now to see it yeah. and see it by bike, yeah. Yeah, I have an entire playlist um, on the development here. Oh, do you? Uh, on my YouTube channel, because I've been following it for basically the last decade. Yeah. Documenting uh, each of the steps, and, and uh, it's been very interesting to also document how the the protected bike lanes have uh, become more robust and more standardized exactly. as the years have have come so it's been very very interesting to document that and then uh, i was here on the first day of school for that middle school oh, to document uh the number of kids oh, walking and biking gosh. so i have a video on that too nice i love all the parks this is fabulous from a new urbanism perspective and from uh -huh the perspective of a city in North America that has built out a Dutch inspired yes. protected cycle network. I would, I'm guessing that this is probably one of the most complete neighborhoods, new neighborhoods that have been built that way. Well, I think you're right. So. Uh, and I'm not seeing that many mistakes, but mm -hmm. a note, these sidewalks are only four feet wide. Yep. It's a shame in this day it's and age. It's a shame. That we're still oh, my no. In things that yeah, Mark had People mentioned can't that. Walk around. Yeah, Mark mentioned that how narrow they are. It's yeah. just like one of those 
the, one of those blind spots that you know they continue yeah. to have. Yeah, but I love the uh, two-way bike yep. facilities. On any of the big, the more major, higher yeah. speed streets. This is good. But this is very uh, good. and and we're in the the more recent builds. But when you get into some of the original homes uh -huh. uh, that you know have been here for over a decade, you'll see the the tree canopy is is yeah. grown in, it's maturing, and yeah. it's maturing. Like here down this street, look to the oh, left. Oh yeah, uh, that's very good. And you can and just that street's see. narrow enough that it could be considered a yield street. Correct. Yes. Yep. And. It's just always very, very comfortable to ride around. Oh yeah, no, this is very nice. And you can see just the dynamic nature. Look at all the kids in the play. Yeah. In the park here. Wonderful parks. Yeah. And even some gardens here. Here's a here's a community garden off to your right. Oh yeah. Oh my. Nice. Oh, and there's the original tower. Yep. Yes. The way they designed this this uh, community this block here is you, you have a clear walkway uh, and with a clear view they're they're doing some work on the outside of the tower is the reason for the scaffolding there but the park is going to be fantastic once they get it complete um, walkways elevated walkways and uh, it's really, really going to be nice so this is john Gaines park it's one of our um, two local pools I love that they're actually, and I didn't know until I moved in the neighborhood, you, the pools, you have access as a neighbor, but you can also come as a city of Austin resident. They're, right. they're all public. Um, and then we talked about the control tower on the way in. Um, I just think it's cool that it's being um, preserved. A couple of observations. First of all, I love your two uh, ADA ramps per corner, which is the right way to do it. And, but I'm curious why you got by with four foot sidewalks when you need five mm -hmm. as a minimum. Yeah, that was a real problem. I think in the initial phases, they were building a lot of the four foot sidewalks. My street has them. Um, um, and you're right, it's, I mean, even two people, it's a little bit yeah. tight. In the later sections, they went for five and needed six sidewalks in some of the uh, busier areas, which is nice. Um, but. So they learned by, Yet, by the mistakes. So this is a great point. This has been a 20 year build out and they have adjusted over the time. So there were no cycle tracks in the initial design. We're gonna cross Berkman up here. That was a retrofit. That was the first cycle track, I believe in Austin. Mm -hmm. uh, first protected cycle mm -hmm. track in Austin. Oh. And uh, it was a retro, it was never designed that way. And in this one, uh, unlike the other ones that we've seen so far where it's the two way, on the one side of the street. Uh, these are one way on each side of the street. Right. And you're also marking each crossing with signs, but no crosswalk markings. It's one nudge at a time, isn't it? Yeah. And the other thing, to have all your speeds posted at 25, when 20 should be the local speed. There's a state law problem there. Uh, 25 is the minimum that you can sign a street. Actually, 30 is without an engineering well, study. Is with an exception. Yeah. Uh, but you can't sign anything yeah. unless it's a school zone or something like that. Right. But anyway, 20 is the right speed. Yeah. I totally agree. Here we go. Now we're talking a narrow street. Mm -hmm. And this one is, is one way or is not one way? It is uh, not it's, one way. it's a yield street, so it's two way, yeah. Very nice. I love getting all this B-roll of so many people in the uh, the bike lanes, cycle paths. <laughs> and it's, it's funny, like more, you know, obviously more people come out with the, the proper season and stuff. So yeah. These days there's so many people out here. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry I wasn't able to come film uh, first day of school again this year. I was uh, out of the country, so I was traveling. Or actually, I was probably I was probably in between trips because uh, I got back August from. August twentieth was the first day. Oh, I was in Colorado. Yeah. So right about between this block and then that's Mainer up there. Yeah, yeah. People, the people in cars get a little bit more, 
Aggressive. Aggressive, yeah. Aggressive. Yeah, yeah. They go a little bit faster. So, Dan, if you look off to the left here, you'll see the... Uh, the oh, natural course. surface trail. Oh yeah. Again, that that goes around the entire circumference of the community. Nice. I believe it's like eight miles long in length total. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. And it's a natural surface. That is natural surface, so it's that. Which is so much better for both walking on and mm -hmm. uh, running. Yes. You yes. Know? Yeah. And it gives you, you know, it's it's nice to have sections where you don't have, you know, the impervious cover. Yeah. Now, Dan, this is the uh, the street that we're talking about with okay. the original protected bike lanes on either side. Oh, nice. Unidirectional. Both directions, yeah. Yeah. And again, it was an afterthought. Berkman Street, okay. But you'll see that they have... Um, why is that car parked there? Uh, they're they're in construction right there, and this transit stop is actually brand new, Dan. Too brand new. So this has all been kind of created. Oh yeah. We did and we did drive in this way. We talked about the new BRT stations and. Um... So Dan, yes, listening. Um, there's obviously a lot going on at this intersection. A this lot. is the entrance into the neighborhood. So um, this is the way we drove in from downtown, Dan. That's um, Maynard. Berman. It connects all the way to the university and then into the downtown area. Um, and this is the trail, the greenway that goes all the way around Miller. So you got a lot of yeah. cyclists and joggers and dog walkers and etc. These are two bus stations for. BRT lines that are coming in. These are going to be high frequency bus stops. And um, then you've got kind of a mixed use district that's uh, being created right here. So there's just a lot going on at this particular uh, spot. And then we've only got a two way stop here as opposed to a four way stop. And I think maybe the city's concern is if you created a four way stop, this is such a short block to the all the entrance, all the traffic flowing into the neighborhood. Yeah. But uh, it seems like this would be a great place to put some um, some sort of protection for the people crossing. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely, and make this a gateway. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you can't really create a gateway at the very entrance, but here you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody was saying the other night, wondering if there's enough room here to do a roundabout, to have a real gateway. Oh, there's more than enough room. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Yeah. Uh, I love the higher uh, density, the townhouses. Yes, we'll, we'll see more. Look at the uh, these nice, yeah. closely clustered homes here. Townhouses. So there's lots of you know sort of surprising density uh -huh. you know that's that's in here. There's they did a good job of uh, mixing in a lot of mis missing middle housing. Well, they really did. Uh, do you know what the overall density is? Uh, I don't, and it's continually changing as they're you know getting Adding out to full units. full build out, and you'll start to see some of the more, the, the denser areas. Yeah, What's that? I just went to, these are some of the narrower streets in the older section. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to 36 foot wide, I think we're more like 28 or 30. I was gonna say they almost act as yield streets, don't they? Yeah, they, uh, when people are parked on both sides, they pretty much are yield. Yeah, yeah, and the trees are maturing nicely. Yeah, they, uh, they will canopy. Can we go down one of your alleys to talk about the alleys? Oh yeah, yeah. sure, sure. Yeah. So do you allow accessory dwelling units? I believe that there's at least one house that got an exception to be able to add one. Okay. Um, once the residents, I believe, take over the management, uh -huh. it gets shifted over from the developer. Okay. Uh, that could certainly be something for the future. Right. And the city is working on um, making you know, accessory dwelling units and granny flats, easier to build. 
um, and there's been some recent movement to the land use code to be able to facilitate oh, good. more units per uh, lot. Okay. Um, but yeah, I only know of one accessory dwelling unit that was actually successfully built here. It was okay. Oh, there's one right there. Yeah, there. Who wants to talk about Antone? Hot mess. It's uh, way too wide. It's a complete straight shot between Airport Boulevard and Bergman. So there's not a single stop sign on this whole stretch of road. And we have seen on Zach Scott, which runs parallel to this road, um, they have over the years added at least what, three additional four-way stops along that length of road, which has effectively controlled the speed of traffic a lot better. But over here, um, we have had, <clears throat> down this direction, my nine-year-old neighbor was hit in 2016, and he ultimately died from his injuries five years later, um, just walking across the street and somebody going too fast. The speed limit at that time was 30 miles an hour. Uh, we also had a young man, son, grown son, 21, grown, I don't know, um, but in the uh, Army Reserves, and he was a runner, and he was running at an uh, airport in Antone, and he was struck by a vehicle and killed. Um, people go too fast. Literally, what, well, that was Tuesday. Somebody was, their door was hit by a car. Um, as, because people are going too fast, there's not enough reaction time to take in what's going on around them. Um, and we've, there's a lot of pushback from the city engineers that I've talked to about creating three-way stops or four-way stops or doing some other, they don't see a stop sign as a traffic calming measure, which I understand, um, but I need them to come up with some other solutions or we need to come up with some other solutions. Oh, absolutely. And four-way stops are not the solution, nor are speed humps. Uh, but each intersection has the potential to add like mini circles or any other type of treatment, a chicane, mm -hmm. right? Um, so yeah, the, uh, your speeds are way too high and your yielding behaviors aren't good enough. Well, first the fire service hates speed humps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there's so many better tools. So at intersections, you can do raised crossings. Yeah. And that does all the work. They're quiet, they're, they're uh, helpful to the pedestrian, and they're not that expensive. You know, they're a little more than a speed hump, right. but they're, they're being used for multiple reasons, right? Uh, so that's a really good one. So I live in Washington State now, and in a town called Port Townsend. Mm -hmm. By right, every property can have an ADU. We already uh, have four accommodations, and we're gonna add one more. Uh, we have a 12,000 square foot lot, and uh, when we put in the two units, we were forced to build another parking lot, which was virtually impossible because of the grade. Uh, we did it, it cost us 30 grand. Uh, now that we're doing uh, another uh, unit, uh, the rules have changed. We don't have to have any off-street parking at all. It's the greatest way to add density and not any cost. Right, yeah. uh, you just get better results for the just tax base and everything. Cost. Sycamores, I love sycamores. There's a lot of square footage on most of these houses. Uh, these are larger uh, yard homes. These are kind of the first ones. They didn't, they weren't sure about the market. Uh huh. You know, this was the east side, an abandoned airport. It wasn't like the hot area of town at that time. Right. And um, so, you know, they went with more traditional housing stock yeah. here. Yeah. But as the project developed, it densified and it went into more row homes. Right. Oh, I love all the shade. This is amazing. And look at all the people out walking today. Did you see that jogger almost get hit when we were trying to cross? I did. Yeah. Um, so there's no reason for speed here. Obviously, we got the park and the trail and there's a whole lot of pedestrian activity. 
there. This is a retrofit. This is one of the streets that was actually my least favorite street in Miller when it was first built. Um, it was still, uh, you know, one lane in each direction, but instead of the median there and the protected bike track, uh, the parking was up against the curb and uh, you had some painted bike lanes in the door zone and it was extra wide to get across. So uh, crossing it north to south uh, was just a major pain. Uh, the cars were going pretty fast. I think they did a speed study and it was over 40 miles an hour. Really? Uh, 85 percentile, yeah. It was like 45, it was close. Um, but then uh, when they built the other side of Zach Scott on the other side of Berkman, they put in a nice treed median with a double uh, protected bike track on one side and they thought, well, maybe we can retrofit this. And so uh, the main thing was it meant taking parking off of the north curb. So there was a lot of controversy over that. Eventually they worked into a nice little compromise where they moved the parking on the other side of the bike track. And then um, at first they did it with just um, paint and uh, the protected, what are those flex Candle, posts? Candlesticks. Candlesticks. Candlesticks, yeah, yeah. But then later on they found some money and they put in the uh, raised curbs here. So now it's a protected. And it's much uh, narrower than to be exposed as a pedestrian when you're crossing. So and this is about a month old, what you see here. Jiminy. Well, I was just mentioning that uh, where I'm heading right now, New Jersey, I'm going to be on the plaintiff's side of a case where a child was hit, age 11, and um, the city, even to this day, that was in 2011, uh, even to this day, they haven't made changes. And they've been given every notice you can dream up, and they're still refusing to act. So it's sad, but uh, we've got a lot of engineers that don't want to admit that they were wrong, and therefore they don't want to do it a different way. Yeah. And it's just stupid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, this is so helpful, thank you. So, Dan, I don't know if you can see it, but we've got a bike signal on this intersection. Yeah. So we got a bike signal on the far side and on this side. And when they designed this neighborhood, we have two intersections in that neighborhood. Both of them they put in the Longhorn. So you cannot go straight across the intersection in a car. I like that. Yeah. Well, good. Okay. Follow the leader. Uh, we're going that way. So we're going to ride through the new roundabout yeah. Yeah. Um, and up uh, Mueller Boulevard, which is not very pleasant. Um, so you can see some even less pleasant. <laughs> and we're going to stop in front of Austin Energy and talk about kind of what's over that way for a minute. So off to the right here, Dan, you're going to notice the big city park. Okay. And you're going to see some uh, of the water retention ponds that they've been able to put oh, in. Oh, how nice. And the other thing that you're going to start to notice is uh, the density is going to like really go up. On the other side. On of the, the other side, yeah, of the park. And you can see off to the right there just some beautiful areas where people hang out. Oh my gosh, yeah. Ah, now we finally get to ride on the natural surface. <laughs> you know it. We've been teasing you with it for a you while. You have. I get to look at it, but I don't get to ride on it. Yeah. <laughs> you can also tell, too, we've got the big, huge strode off to the left oh my in Airport Boulevard. Yeah. Eventually, that is going to get redesigned with, hopefully, a BRT or maybe a, a rail line. Uh-huh. Um, but right now, it's just an absolute mess. Oh, it is, isn't it? And it's one of the biggest challenges for, you know, people are used to like getting up to speed on that thing and then they come into the neighborhood and can yeah, carry that speed on through. But you get to see something that's new as of just this next week and that is a semi-protected roundabout. Ooh, nice. So we will see. Doug, are we gonna do the roundabout? Yeah. Okay, good. I want to be next to you when we roll through here, so. Oh, good. 
All right. So this is this is also brand new. This is a two-way cycle track for just this one little section here. Nice. It's because the other side of the street, they wanted to elevate it and they didn't have enough space. So okay. they this is all brand new. They took a lane away to create this. Well, wonderful. And the roundabout only needs to be single lane. And the roundabout only needs to be single lane. It's still the lanes are still a little wider than I'd like to see. Yeah. But yeah. But still, but we stay nice. up here. Yep. How long has this been in? Uh, just this past week. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. The roundabout's been here, but the retrofit of the separation is just uh -huh. this week. I was here last weekend filming it, and they were still uh, pouring concrete. Yeah. Getting good density in those units. Yep. So Preston lives right up there on the fourth floor. Oh, really? Yep. Have to get him to tell me what it's like. Uh, yeah. He'll tell you it's wonderful. <laughs> oh, bet he will. <laughs> All right, and we're going to stop and talk. This is awesome. Isn't this great? Oh, my God. Brand spanking new. I have not ridden that. That's great. Oh. So single lane roundabout, um, bike protected or separate mm -hmm. bike lane all the way around. I love it. Not only that, <laughs> it's not quite complete over on the other side, but they're getting there. Okay. Yeah, okay, one of the new things the city is doing, they started doing this maybe a couple of years ago, is color coding all the shared use paths uh, with this red uh, colored concrete. I like that. So, uh, so now that's kind of like throughout the city they're doing that. Anytime pedestrians and cyclists intersect, the cyclists get a terracotta color. Okay. Okay, so people know, oh, there's cyclists coming here. Yeah. No, that's nice. I really like that. Terracotta. <laughs> and it's actually very wide, right? Now, this is cool. Terracotta color at a roundabout, singling, and then nice density units here. And as we see, the terracotta bike way continues on into a protected on-street system. So Dan, this is an example of the quick retrofit that they did to add the protected uh, bike lane. Okay. So you'll see the concrete, they were able to just drop these in place. Right. So this is similar in design to the one that we've been teasing you about in Berkman <laughs> Avenue. Um, yeah. And haven't yet been able to show you, but I'm sure we will. Of course. But it, that's, this is the type of material that they used over there. Nice. Very nice. And you still have more lanes than you need. Yeah, right? this is ridiculous because we were just in a one lane roundabout and yeah. uh, there's no reason for this to then expand. None whatsoever. So, yeah. This will likely get redone. The street will get redone okay. um, after this construction is done. You'll see off to the right, we've got a hole in the ground. They've got another apartment complex going up. Going in, yeah. So hospitals, corporate campuses here, lots of apartments. So this is the part of Miller that uh, a lot of people who only see the residential area and don't oh, even oh. realize that this all exists. Oh my gosh. What um, is the hospital? Uh, so this is the uh, Children's Hospital. Okay. And apparently we're stopping here. In the shade. And this is Austin Energy. Holy cow. Um, John, I heard you saying some of it's to Dan already, but so this is Austin Energy. We have other big corporate buildings in here. Um, the Children's Hospital. Um, uh, the the loop that we talked about is four miles, comes through this way, and, and the beginning of it's back in there. Um, there's also a big kind of strip shopping center back behind this that um, faces onto I-35. Um, and my understanding is, is that it was built that way because there were very few people living here at the time. They weren't sure they could get enough commercial activity but that it was built in a in kind of a grid in a way that it could be divided up and densified um, in the future. I don't know if that's still the plan, but that's what the original 
thinking was. But there is access in from the neighborhood? Yes. There is, yeah, yeah. So there's like a Best Buy and a Home Depot and, and that kind of thing. Um, and is it a conventional layout, uh, big parking lots out front, or is it real, like a real downtown? It's pretty conventional, although it is, it, you know, it has out parcels. It is a little bit contained with parking kind of in the middle. Parking's in the middle of the shop's circlet, but it was designed originally, and I'm sorry, Janet, in here, designed originally so when the big boxes fail or go away, it, it was set up so we could come back in and do housing and do uh, nice. residential. Very nice. Oh, it's so good to see all this, and it's crazy to see four lanes. When yeah. Yes. yeah, that's what we wanted you to see, the, 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 the good, bad, the ugly. <laughs> oh, yeah, the whole works. Yeah. Thanks for arranging such great weather. <laughs> so again, just this is that side of the development a lot of people never know about. And it's uh -huh. like, yep, there's lots of townhouses, lots of condos, lots of Wow. Apartment complex is going in. Um, as Preston alluded to, um, they have done a really good job of integrating affordable housing into the mix. And yes. so there's no way of knowing which unit is affordable and not. Oh, I like that. So, and it's not to say all of the affordable housing is treated that way, but right. a good portion of it is. I'm not sure if we're going to roll past them, but there's also what they call shop houses, which is live work. Uh -huh. uh, facilities where there's like a ground floor retail or artist space and then um, residents above. Yeah. And so they have that inter integrated into the neighborhood as well. That's very nice. Pretty much all the stuff, you know, those those hot button yeah. Congress for New Urbanism things, <laughs> they, they were able to program into this. Of course. So. Oh, a little connector, I love that. Oh yes, the little pass-throughs. Yeah. Yep. Nice island, I like that. I suspect they're gonna bring bring us to the Paseo so you can see the Paseo. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you guys doing this. Oh, we appreciate you being here. Yeah. Yeah. It's always fun to get to hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I'm just really, you know, I'm still kicking myself that in 2017 when I was filming the uh, the bike tour of uh, Victoria, oh, yeah. where you had to peel off and help that one gal, and, oh, and I continued filming Todd. Yeah. And so, because it was supposed to be the two of you. <laughs> she she came so. under very false pretenses. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you did a walking tour with her. <laughs> so. But. So Dan, just to give you orientation again, off to the left is that big park that we were uh, we were looking at earlier. Yes. So that's where the water feature is now. I'm going to stop and get a photo here. Okay. Oh, somebody's having a birthday. Yep. So the thinkery here is like a child's museum type oh, really? place. Hayden's hoping you will look up the say Yeah. Oh, yeah. less expensive maintenance is that the correct understanding that you can right yeah That's how so cool true. is this yeah isn't this great this is everybody's favorite yeah. it's our pedestrian paseo <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a pub at the end of the street no reason. What? No you reason. want to go drink beer? Okay. <laughs> this feels very European to me. The race crossing to Nessie. Yes. Yeah. That we're not supposed to climb, but they got to put it there, the sign there for liability reasons, I guess. I don't know. That's another channel. <laughs> Thank you.
practicing our rolling at pedestrian speed. Yeah. An Irish pub. Yes. BD Riley's. The local Liverpool soccer team this is their squad. Nice. All right. Well, guys, I uh, really appreciate your joining me and showing me around. Uh, it's, it's very informative. I uh, was chatting with a couple of people. It feels a lot like Baldwin Park, which was exceptionally well designed out of another uh, air base, uh, in that case, a Naval Air Training Center. But this is super. It really is. Some applause for Dan. Yeah. Thanks, guys. And for our beaters. Thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you yay, yay. Well, any, any final thoughts of, about what you saw today here in Miller? Well, you know, one thing I really like is how we retrofit an airport into a real neighborhood. Yeah. And uh, that this is a mixed use neighborhood, that it's got decently laid out streets. There, mistakes got made just based on when they did it, like four yeah. foot sidewalks instead yeah. of five. Yeah. But it's going to be very green, yeah. very luscious, and, uh, and and it's one more example of, of us finally getting it right. Yeah. You know, Winston Churchill said, you can always trust Americans to get it right after they do all the wrong things first. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's so correct on that. <laughs> exactly. yeah. uh, uh, and uh, I think the good thing about uh, Europeans is they didn't have enough money to make the kind of blunders that we did in our country. Sure. We had too good of an economy. But sometimes not having a, a poor economy yeah. causes you to do stupid things. Yeah. And we just need to stop doing the stupid things. We have too much land, too much money, yeah. and too little common sense. Yeah. And I'll end with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this ride-along tour on-bike interview with Dan Burden at the Miller community there in Austin, Texas. A uh, special thanks to Dan Burden with Blue Zones for doing this and to Hayden Blackwalker for making this happen. Uh, Preston Tyree for additional support. And I was super stoked that uh, Dan did get a chance to see Berkman, the boulevard here, uh, and the protected bikeway on either side of this wonderful uh, street. And you can see here that folks are yielding, which is exactly what we want to see. Uh, again, thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. And if you're enjoying this content here on the Active Towns channel, it'd be honored to have you as an Active Towns ambassador. It's easy to do. Just navigate over to activetowns.org and click on the support button at the top of the page. Again, thank Thank you so much for tuning in. It really means so much to me. And until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.